Hi, my name is Shervin, and I've had a lot of people ask about my setup when I teach yoga classes online. So I'm going to walk you through all the equipment that I use and how I do it. And there's two main pieces, right? There's on-demand recorded classes, and there are live classes that you can stream. So I'm going to show you the equipment that can work for your setup to do both at the same time, essentially. So you're recording a live stream class. And I'm going to link everything in the description. If you're interested in buying these tools, you can. Uh, and just note that it might be a little different if you have a different type of computer or setup. Very first thing, laptop, right? This is where I play Zoom, play Zoom. This is where I load up Zoom and live stream the class. Uh, the second piece is audio, right? So the video camera is built into my laptop. I'm streaming through that. And then I'm wearing a microphone, as you can see, and that's audio piece number one. This is a headset I got off Amazon. It's omnidirectional. It's pretty okay. And I wear it because when I'm doing yoga, if you're wearing a lav mic, if I'm moving around, it's pretty close to my face and it won't ruffle again against things. So that's what I like about it. And then also I pinned it to the back of my shirt so that when I'm moving around and I lay on the floor, let's say it doesn't get like, it doesn't pull on the back of this wire. So that's also important. Then this plugs into a Rode Wireless Go. So this is a pretty cheap device, $200, not cheap, but like cheaper than most lav mic devices. It's rather small which is great. It's good for short distances and it has a built-in mic. If you want, you can just wear this. It's just a little heavy and it's kind of hard to kind of work out and move around. So that's why I bought the headset mic, which then plugs right in to the Rode Wireless Go. Boop, right, plugs in. And then this transmit the audio, transmits the audio over to the receiver. This is the Rode Wireless Go receiver component. And this then outputs the audio from my microphone into wherever I plug it in, right? If you're trying to record and do a live stream, what you want to do is split the audio. So I took the classic auxiliary. It's a TRS, so it has two ridges, right? You want to make sure that it has two ridges. A splitter, it's a stereo splitter. Not a stereo splitter, but just a splitter where it splits the audio into two so like two people can listen to the headphones at the same time. I plug that in. I take the cable that came with it, this is the actual road cable that came with it, I then plug that in to one side of this splitter. So the audio gets sent into the camera into a Lumix Panasonic GH5 with a 12 millimeter f-stop 1.4 lens, so it's pretty wide, low light is decent, and then it captures the audio and saves it, right? Good quality, that's why there's this setup. Then it splits into a second piece, right? Classic auxiliary cable that you plug into your car. Same thing, you see the two ridges? That plugs into the other end. So TRS, this is all TRS cables thus far. This auxiliary cable, rather long to make it easier and not pull things, plugs into an extender cable. So this is a female to female auxiliary cable or 3.5 millimeter TRS. I plug that into one end of this. So it's this essentially acts as an extender. You don't need it. I have it just in case I don't want cables being pulled, which plugs into another road cable. There's a difference here, right? The original one that comes with it, black to black. So TRS to TRS, two stripes, two stripes. When I plug in the two stripes into this extender, on the other end is a gray cable, TRRS, three stripes. So this is a little bit different. This is what the new, after 2015, MacBooks, iPhones, iPads are now using. So just something to keep in mind is they have the three ridges. The three ridges don't work together with the two ridges. So keep that in mind. So that's why I need this cable, it's an adapter. I plug that in, TRRS, into the jack of my MacBook. Some of the older MacBooks, like my iMac 2014, does not support this. So you'd have to buy a USB cable that I will also link below that has an, a mic input in that. And then you can use a TRS, the two ridge, in that one. You don't need this adapter. The next piece, right, for live streaming on a laptop, you, need, you should probably plug into Ethernet. This is a USB-C laptop, so I have an adapter. We've got Ethernet, it's live, and that runs to my router. Really long cable, I don't want to show it to you, it'll show the messy house. But this goes straight to the router that's in the middle of our home. Next piece, power, right? You always want to be plugged into power, so I've got the charging cable always plugged in. And now what I'm doing is I'm splitting the audio from my headset into Zoom, so that way they can hear me live. 
Um, that audio is also going to the Panasonic GH5, so it's being recorded on a camera at good quality because Zoom compresses your video quality to standard definition. This is like DVD quality. You don't want to be watching that 480p. So you can either use this camera, it's kind of expensive, or you can buy like a camcorder. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is any other DSLR, like a Canon or a Nikon, does not have unlimited recording time. This can record unlimited. Some of the Canon and Nikons, they stop recording at 20 or 30 minutes. So something to keep in mind when you have a DSLR. Uh, but the handheld cameras like you saw back in the day, right? Those ones, those have longer recording time. So just make sure what you're buying there is good quality and lasts a while. Next, batteries. This luckily lasts about an hour and a half to two hours, maybe more. So I use one battery um, and that can last pretty much one class. Uh, the next piece, headphones, right? I need to hear without interfering with the microphone. So I put on AirPods so I can hear music and it doesn't get streamed through uh, Zoom or the camera and I can add that in post if I need to or use a different playlist or not have music at all. And I can hear the people talking on Zoom if I'm engaging with them. So this is purely just headphones, wireless. The AirPods Pro might fit better in your ear. These can kind of get loose in my ears. It's, it just depends on your the format of your ears. And then lastly, I have lights, right? Actually, I have water too, because when you talk a lot, you need to drink water. But I have a light that's kind of facing at an angle, big soft box, really bright, it's to kind of create and put me on the spot, because you can use window light, use window light, it's great, um, but this just creates some consistency, especially if there's like clouds going by, the light, the light amount can change, so I just want to make sure it's a consistent amount of light, especially during an hour long class. Uh, and then, uh, today we also have this light up here, which is bouncing off of the ceiling and hitting me down. And this is my mat right here, as you can see. So we've got my yoga mat, right? The equipment is right next to you. We have light that reflects up and fills me here, kind of like a backlight. We have the front light, that's a fill light. And then we have our main light, main source of light, yoga mat. And then on here, I also joined via Zoom on my iPad. So usually I'll have the Zoom video feeds running here so I can see everyone's video feed and I can actually call out names and say and talk to people when I'm actually practicing with them so it's easier. But when I do that, I always make sure I look at the camera because that's what they see. If I'm looking at the iPad and saying their names and they see me on the camera feed, like talking to them but not looking at them, it's kind of weird, right? If I was like, hey, hey Brian, how are you doing? Yeah, Brian, I really love uh, your squat right now. It's looking really good. Feels weird, right? So always be looking at the camera when you talk to them. It feels weird. Screen's kind of small, especially when it's far away. Even when I see them, I'll look, notice, look, talk. Sequence, kind of hidden, they can't see it. Use those as my notes, it's a lot easier. Uh, and then I practice on the yoga mat with them for most of the time. I try to say their names while I'm flowing and then there'll be points throughout class where I'll pause and go actually talk to the camera. But typically, large classes, you have a mix of students, so they kind of want to see you move so they can understand what you're doing. Um, and that's pretty much the setup. This light has a cool remote, so I can like turn it on and off. Whoop. And that's about it. This is the setup. This is a great setup if you want to do live stream classes and record those live stream classes at a high quality. So I recommend trying it. I'll link everything down below. Um, they're all from Amazon, so it's pretty easy to buy. It might be kind of pricey, but it could be a worthwhile investment. And I'll also link this camera. This is actually a different camera. Uh, an extra setup you could also do is connect like this DSLR to Zoom and stream through this camera while I'm recording through another DSLR. But I've just found it's, it's not the best experience, but I might try it again. Something to try, if you've done that, worked for you, let me know in the comments. My name is Shervin, I hope you enjoyed this. Share this video with someone who you think is important, tag them below, whatever it might be. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow. See you in the next one, peace!